Hey everybody and welcome to today's video. Now in today's video I want to do something slightly different. I want to re-watch or revisit a video that I filmed last year. Now in this video I talked about Azure Migrate and how you can use it to assess your physical servers and how you can use that to start your journey for migrating to Azure. Now what I've found is the video has been wildly popular so thank you to everybody that has watched that video and liked that video. I really do appreciate that support. However what it's attracted is a bunch of comments and questions asking some common th themes across the video. So I'm guessing there's some pieces in the video that I haven't quite explained quite right. So what I want to do in this video today is actually watch that video I filmed last year with you all and answer some of the questions that people have reached out to me with. So hopefully this is a, a cool format and you like this, but do leave a comment, do hit that like button um, if you like this and let me know your thoughts on this video and hopefully we'll address some of the questions that you have around using Azure Migrate to assess your physical machines. So let's dive in to the video. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Lean and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. Today I want to talk to you about Azure Migrate. Azure Migrate was launched in 2017 and is a great tool for being able to assess and migrate your workloads from on-prem into Azure. We now have the ability to assess and migrate physical workloads from on-prem into the cloud. We can even use that technology to be able to assess and migrate workloads from other clouds as well. Now, this is something to just make, make you aware of. So the biggest question we had with Azure Migrate was that we couldn't actually look at physical servers a few years ago. We could only look at um, virtual servers, so anything that lived on, say, Hyper-V or VMware, we could look at. But there was also a bunch of ser servers that we couldn't look at, so the physical servers that people had still in their data centers. So this tool was launched to actually address that question. Now, what it can do as well, though, is look at your physical servers, is it can actually look at virtual servers. So if you have servers that you don't actually have access to the hypervisor level, so maybe you are in a managed service provider support where you are hosting a bunch of virtual machines within their VMware solution, but you don't actually have access to the vCenter server, you can actually use this, this physical assessment tool to actually look at those virtual machines the same way that you can if you want to look at your virtual machines that live in another cloud provider. So if you have um, virtual machines within say AWS or GCP and you're looking to actually migrate them to Azure, you can treat them as if they were physical servers in the sense of the tool and actually use this tool to assess them and pull the data of what those servers in that other cloud provider's environment are doing and then get information about trying to migrate them into Azure. So although it's labeled as the physical server assessment tool, it can actually assess any type of server that you can access, to be honest. So let's have a look and dive in. In order to assess the physical estate, we need to download the Azure Migrate appliance. And you can do that by getting the latest version from aka.ms slash physical. Now, this is something that people have asked about. So what you have to do in order to assess your servers is actually use another server to plug in to the servers. So you build a server. So you can build this server as, either as a physical or as a virtual server within your environment. It needs to have Windows Server 2016 installed on it. The Azure Migrate um, appliance only supports um, Windows Server 2016 at the moment, as of this, this, this date this video was filmed. So you build that server, whether it be virtual or physical within your environment. And as long as it has access and it can see these servers that you want to assess, that's where you're actually going to install the Azure Migrate appliance. Now, if you're used to using Azure Migrate with say VMware or Hyper-V, what you'll be used to is actually downloading that OVA or VHD file and that's all pre-built for you so the operating system and the Azure Migrate tool are all there. In this scenario what you're doing is you're pre-building your server so you're pre-building that server with the Windows Server operating system on it and then you're downloading the Azure Migrate appliance tool and you're installing that on the server so hopefully that clears up what I'm trying to do here and why I'm doing it as well. Now once you've downloaded the necessary installer files and unzipped them, you need to kick off that install and we do that via PowerShell. So on your server on-prem, you need to launch a PowerShell command window and navigate to the folder where the installer files are. Once in the right directory, run the Azure Migrate install PowerShell file. This will kick off the installer checks 
and start off making modifications to your registry, rolled and strolled and installing the necessary tooling. Once the installation has taken place, a browser window will open that starts the Azure Migrate Appliance tooling. You'll be asked to read and accept the license terms and then the appliance will run through some checks, some basic internet connectivity checks and time sync checks. It will also check that the latest version of Azure Migrate Appliance has been installed as well and if not, it will carry on um, installing the necessary updates for you. Now, once those checks have been carried out, you will be asked to register this appliance. This involves logging into your Azure tenant with the relevant credentials. Once you do this, you will be asked which Azure subscription and Azure Migrate project you want to register this new appliance with. You will also give this appliance a name, which will help you identify it within the Azure Migrate project. The next section is about adding credentials and you're adding credentials so that the Azure Migrate appliance has the right access level to be able to collect data from your physical servers. Now I've said physical server collection data here, but as if you'll remember at the start of the video, I've emphasized that we can actually use this to collect data from any server within your environment. So you just have to provide credentials to any of the servers that you want to actually um, view within your environment. So although it says physical, remember that we can actually use this tool to assess any server within your environment. So um, yeah, just remember that as well. And the last section is to point the appliance at the physical servers you want to assess and the credentials you want to use. Now in this example, I have used IP addresses to identify my servers, but you could use the fully qualified domain name if you prefer for your servers. The appliance will validate that information you have provided and once it is happy with that data, it will start to collect information and data about your servers. I'd always recommend a minimum of 24 hours for the data collection and if possible, allow it to actually run for a whole month. This will give you a good usage pattern for your servers so that you can base recommendations on that usage pattern. Now, after a short while, you can go into the Azure portal and start to see that data that's being collected by the Azure Migrate appliance and you can then do some further analysis on that data. So the process of assessing your physical servers um, isn't very different from how you would assess your virtual servers using Azure Migrate. Ultimately, the data you get out from either assessment of your physical or virtual machines is the same um, data. And you can use that going forward to plan how you want to migrate your workloads from on-prem into the cloud. So hopefully that has actually cleared up what the Azure Migrate physical server appliance can do. Um, I know this format has been a little different. So me re-watching a video that I did last year, but hopefully it shows you the progression that not only have I had in creating videos, but also that the tool and understanding what information people are looking for about this tool. So again, if you've loved this video, please do hit that um, like button, even consider subscribing and I'll hopefully catch you in my next video.